Hello, everybody. This is Corsair Mack, president of the Illinois Mental Health Counselors Association. And today I am joined by our very own special guest, Dr. Latoya Patterson. How are you doing today? I am doing well. How are you? I am doing good also. Thanks for asking. Made it through the cold morning. It's supposed to get up to 24, so a little bit of a heat wave. So I am excited. Yes. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. And then also, well, let's just jump right into it. So all of your fans want to know, how did you become interested in counseling? Oh, um, so I'll try to give the brief version. Um, so it started out, to be honest, I was a business major to begin with. Um, and then I think I took a psychology class or two and it became very interesting to learn about the human mind and what goes on with the brain and how it correlates with different things in the human body. Um, but really what got me into counseling is just personal history of I have an uncle who struggles with mental health issues and just seeing that unfold within our family um, was sometimes difficult to see and people not really having an understanding of what it means to be a person that has schizophrenia. And so I decided to go that route, learn more information, and it just up. And I decided to go further and to pursue counseling and see ways that I can help other families that were going through the same thing and impart that knowledge. All right, perfect. Short, sweet, and simple. I love it. <laughs> right. Okay. So speaking of counseling, another mm -hmm. well, perfectly segue into the next question. So what schools did you go to for your undergrad, graduate, and postgraduate degrees? Um, so for undergrad, I went to Roosevelt University, which is in the downtown area of Chicago. For my first master's in clinical psych, I also stayed at Roosevelt for that. For my master's in forensic psychology, I went to Argus University. And for my PhD in counselor education, I went to Adler University, which is also an institution in the downtown area. All right. Very nice. So you've been everywhere. So, I've been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you go to all these places and, mm -hmm. you know, you get your degrees and all that stuff. So then you're out there in the real world doing, you know, like they say, the Lord's work, <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. So, how long have you been doing therapy for? I've been doing therapy now. Oh my goodness. I believe it's going to be 14 years now. I started when I was 24. Um, and that was a, an experience all by itself. You're young, you're going out into this field, you, you have the classroom knowledge, but now it's time to take that and put it in the real world. So it was really, um, an interesting time when I first started, just the different knowledge, def different information that I came across, different scenes and sites that I've been to. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been doing this for quite a bit now, but it's been a very fun journey along the way. All right. Very nice. Very nice. So then speaking of that journey, if you would mm -hmm. be willing to impart some of that knowledge and wisdom onto us. What places did you start off working in your profession and what did you learn as a result from working at those places? Yeah, so the very first place I worked at was an agency called Circle Family Healthcare Network. Um, it was like a local community mental health facility where I just came across different various populations, um, which was very fun. So that was my first time really doing counseling. I got to see how other people did their counseling. That's when I kind of really got to learn to build my theoretical orientation and somewhat of my counselor identity, which I feel like I'm still building as I go because I feel like it's ever changing. Um, I also worked for a local place called Pilsen Wellness Center, and that was a methadone clinic. And so that was very interesting to work with the substance abuse population because that's that's a different population. You're doing different techniques with them. And I've learned a lot from my clients. I also worked for Northwestern Hospital uh, for a while. Then I actually left counseling alone and went and worked for an insurance agency as a behavior health specialist. Um, so we did like crisis work over the phone, providing um, our clients what we call customers with referrals for different mental health facilities. And now I'm completely into being a professor. So now I'm at Chicago State where I am a full-time tenure track assistant professor. All right, very nice. Well, now I have some side questions about insurance, <laughs> behavioral health, what? Yes. Impossible, yes. but- Very different. I know, very different. 
But I know you mentioned also you work at Chicago State as a now full tenure track professor. So what was that process like? Oh, that was different. Um, I think it struck me kind of early on. Like, I think I want to be a professor. I wanted to be able to impart the knowledge that I gained and also some things that I felt like I kind of missed along the way that I learned on my own. And I felt like, you know, for new counselors coming up, I think this is information they should, should know. And so I decided to step and take a leap of faith and decided to go into that arena of being a professor. And that process was um, a really good one. The individuals at Chicago State, my coworkers, the staff, they were so welcoming and they are so encouraging and they have made my process really easy for me um, to kind of fit in when you're the new kid on the block you feel like oh my god do I have what I, it needs to take to be in this field compared to the people I work with um, and they made me feel comfortable they say hey you may be new but you have a lot to offer and I learned from them they have become my mentors in a lot of ways and so it, it has been a fun process going through this 10-year track Okay. So a side note question. I always ask this when someone's a professor, what is your favorite class to teach? Ooh, so my favorite class, I would have to say is what we call micro counseling. Some people call it counseling skills course. And so this is a chance where I get the newbies and I'm teaching them all of these uh, counseling skills that they need to know to be an effective counselor once they get out into the real world. So I always love that because this is a time where I get to make them role play. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of a payback for me having to do role play when I was in school. Mm -hmm. um, so I make them do role plays. They have to do mock counseling video sessions and you know present it to the class. So I really like that because this is my chance to actually get them when they first come into the door, teach them what they need to know and use these techniques, just not in this class, but you can really take them throughout all the classes that they'll be taking throughout their time at Chicago State. All right, very nice, right? Got to get that payback for what we had to do it. I know, <laughs> a little hazy, it's no. out of love though. <laughs> out of love, exactly. All right, so a lot of people don't know this, but you're a very busy woman, right? You. Yeah worked in a lot of different areas insurance now that I know you're a full 10-year professor at Chicago State University and also on top of that you have your own private practice I do mm -hmm. so what led you to want to start your own private practice or what was that process oh, I will say it was anxiety provoking because that is really a huge leap of faith on my part mm -hmm. I'm like you know, I think it's time for me to step out and be a businesswoman uh, and get my own company. And I thought about it. I had started back in 2018 and I let it falter because I became so nervous. Um, and then, you know, my partner, he was like, you know, I really think this is something that you should do. This is a way for you to still hone your skills and still be able to uh, do what you love as far as a full time senior track professor and doing this on the side. So I, it took a lot of soul searching, a lot of praying to, you know, a lot of guidance on what I wanted to do. But I felt like I didn't want to be in the counseling space full time, but I knew this was something that was a passion of mine. So I decided to go ahead and have my own private practice, which is the Essence of Healing LLC. And that name came to me in a dream. Um, and that's what I went with. It came to me. Um, clear as day and I say you know what that is what I'm going to name my private practice and here we are all right perfect all right that was going to be my next question how did you come up with the name essence of healing so it came to you in a dream that's interesting it came to me in a dream um and I was like wow that was plain as day so I I went with it I felt like it also speaks to how I see clients I give them the tools which is the essence of how you heal um, throughout your your journey so these whatever tools I impart whatever coping skills any techniques all of those strategies these this is the essence of what you need to use to go out and be you know fruitful and productive all right very nice like I tell yeah. everybody you put a lot more thought into your name than I do <laughs> <laughs> all right so speaking of your private practice probably going more to why you're such a busy person maybe 
Well, what are some projects that you're working on in your private practice that you would want people to know about? Um, so some practices that projects, I'm sorry, that I'm, I'm thinking about currently is that I'm looking at imposter syndrome and how it has an impact on our mental health and our daily lives, especially for women of color and how we navigate workspaces. So that's what my dissertation kind of centered around. And I like to look at how African-American women function in the workplace and how we may have to code switch or how we may feel like we don't belong when we really do have a seat at the table. But sometimes we may feel like, I don't belong in this space. Am I adequate enough? Am I effective as the rest of my colleagues? So really looking at how imposter syndrome, even code switching plays a big part as far as mental health and how we navigate our workplaces. All right, definitely, very nice. So. Before we circle back to a little bit of that, let me also ask you another mm -hmm. follow-up question because a lot of people are looking to start their own private practices. So what advice would you give someone that's looking to start their own private practice? Patience um, <laughs> is very yeah. important because there's a lot of things that we have to go through that um, you may not know, like being contracted with insurance panels that takes time. Um, getting applications done for the state of Illinois. And we know how sometimes that could be a drag. So really having patience. And I also say, giving yourself some grace is really, really important. I think people feel like once I get this business, you know, clients are gonna just flood my office. They're just gonna come in. And that may not always be the case. It may start out slow. So having patience and giving yourself grace and room to grow is definitely what I say to people who are decided to start their own practice. All right, definitely. Great advice. So then circling back a little bit to what you were talking about earlier, I mean, true, mm -hmm. we are in February, which is Black History Month. And true, yes. I believe, you know, this topic that I'm about to ask you shouldn't just be mm -hmm. brought up during February, it should be brought up all the time. But mm -hmm. I also wanted to just gauge, gauge and get your experiences of what is it like being a Black woman in the mental health field? Um, it has its moments. It has its trials. It has its up and ups and downs. Um, if we're being very honest, we, we have to know that counseling is from a Eurocentric standpoint. Um, mostly people of Caucasian backgrounds engage in counseling. That's who we mostly saw for the most part. And so now we're living in this very diverse world. So your counselor can look like anybody. It can be anybody. Um, and I'll just say for me personally, working in some places uh, was rather difficult because not only was I a woman, but I was also a Black woman. So it was that double whammy that I would get sometimes. And I would have to really assert myself to show like I belong in this space just as much as anybody else does. And so there were times where I had to, you know, speak up a little louder because my voice may be drowned out by others. Or, um, you know, you wear your hair differently because you want to be seen as professional or you dress a certain way because you want to be seen as professional. And so what people don't know is that that can be very mentally exhausting. Um, for people. And so I had to look at myself like anxiety or some forms of depression because I'm trying to fit this mold while trying to still be myself could be difficult at times. But now that I'm older, I have better knowledge. I come as I am. I'm still professional, twist, red hair and all. Um, I just come as I am. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much for imparting that on You're us. Welcome. All right. So don't know how I'm going to follow that one up or transition, but I'm going to do my best here. All right. So you talked about your experiences, you know, being a professional, mm -hmm. you know, especially being a black woman in the mental health field. And it looks like that professionalism led you actually to run and get elected as president elect elect of yeah. ICFC, which is the Illinois Association for Couples and Family Counseling. So yeah. what led you to run for that presidency for IACSC? I think what made me run is that now within the society that we live in, families look different. And so we want to be inclusive to everybody, all family types, no matter how that makeup of the family is. And so um, 
And even just in my own family, how I was raised and the things that we do within the family, um, I just want society to see like, these families are here to stay. And this is how we can help these families feel like they are a part of our society. We don't want to shun anybody away. And so I decided to run for that position in hopes when it's my time to shine as president, just imparting the things that I've learned as a professor, things that I've seen out in the real world that we can do within this community so that we can bring all families together, provide all resources for families, no matter what they look like. And so that's what kind of made me want to run for that position. All right, very nice. So I don't know if this is gonna be given away or share what you can on this aspect. So what plans do you have for your presidency? Oh, that is a good question. Because we are, uh, I don't want to say that we're small, but we're kind of small, but we are mighty. And so I want us to get our name out there more. Our current president has done a wonderful job of doing that. So I do want, I have big shoes to fill behind Dr. Nicole Thompson. I want to plug her because she has done an excellent job with this organization. Um, and so I want us to have more conferences. I want us to be well known. I want people to say, hey, if I have a resource or if I need a resource for families, couples, anything like that, you know, I can go to this organization, the uh, IACFC and get information. So I just want us to be able to be out there, not just on a local scale, but on a national scale as well. All right, very nice. So by the time you're president, we're gonna see IACFC on TV, right? That is the goal. <laughs> all right, definitely. Knock on what fingers crossed, I'll pray for you all. I'm 100% sure Thank you. you all will be able to do it. All right, so I know we have a little bit of time left. And true, I mean, mm -hmm. all good things must come to an end, but it doesn't have yeah. to end just yet. So I want to get down to the final three questions here. So then, is there anything that you would like to tell people starting out in the field who have been in the field for a while? Starting out again, I say, give yourself some grace. Do not feel like you have to take over the world. Um, you help one person at a time. I think our new clients, our new counselors, excuse me, come in and they feel like I have to save everybody. But if you make a change in one person's life, you have done a lot. Um, for people who have been in the field for some time, never stop learning. Always be a life learner. Our field information gets old quick. So we want to make sure that we're staying on top of things. So always be open to learn new things. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Couldn't have said that better myself. All right, so second to last question. Is there anything that you would like to say that I haven't had a chance to ask you about? Um, let's see. I think you kind of asked this, but I, I really do have a passion for counseling. And I must say that I would like to see more people of color come into the counseling space um, and be a part of this world. Um, and it's, it's been a pleasure, especially at Chicago State, seeing more men in our program who wants to be counselors, like that makes my soul smile because I feel like we need to see more black men in these spaces. All right, perfect. So you heard it here, folks. Apply to Chicago State University and she yes. will take you in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So the last and most important question, where can people contact and find you if they have more questions or want to get more information from you? Sure. They can always go to my website, which is essenceofhealingllc.com. Um, our email address is info at essenceofhealingllc.com. Please, if you know anybody, you yourself feel like you need to get some therapy services, feel free to reach out and we will take care of you. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. Perfect and perfect. Well, we're going to definitely have to have you back on for a part two. I really need to hear more about that insurance yeah. and behavioral health. Yes. That might be a new thing there. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. Other than that, everybody, that is it for this interview. Again, thank you, Dr. Latoya Patterson for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And it was a pleasure being here with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right, everybody. This is Corsair Mack, president of the Illinois Mental Health Counselors Association, signing out. And I'll see you all in the next interview. Take care.